Welcome to Electro Online. Here we're going to take a look at how to find the integrating factor when we assume that it's not necessarily the traditional type of integrating factor. Normally we assume that the integrating factor will be some sort of x to the n, uh, y, oop, y to the, oh, make that x to the m, y to the n power. But it could be that it only needs one of those two variables, and it could be that the variable is in the denominator. For example, we can assume that the integrating factor may be something like 1 over y to the n power, just like what we have in our example title there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to simply say, let's assume that it's something simple like that, and later on we'll try maybe 1 over x to the n, or maybe 1 over x to the n, y to the n. And uh, so we start off with this general equation, 3x squared y dx minus x cubed dy equals 0. And let's quickly see if it's an exact equation or not. I have the suspicion that it's not an exact equation. So we take the partial with respect to um, y of m. And of course, m is this quantity right here. So this is the partial with respect to y of the quantity 3x squared times y. And notice that y is the variable, that means x is a constant, so this will be 3x squared. Doing that again for the other part of the equation, the partial of n with respect to x is equal to the partial with respect to x of this quantity right here, which is minus x cubed, which is equal to, since x is the variable, that will be minus 3x squared. Notice they're not the same, this is pos positive, this is negative, they're not the same, therefore it is not exact. Not the same, therefore not exact. All right, so we need the integrating factor, and let's assume that the integrating factor takes on this form right there. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over y to the n, and all we have to do then is find out what the exponent n is equal to. So taking our equation, we're going to write 1 over y to the n power times 3x squared y times dx minus x cubed times dy is equal to 0. When we multiply, we get the following. We have 3x squared times y to the 1 minus n dx minus x cubed times y to the minus n times dy is equal to 0. Now again, we're going to take the partial of this with respect to y, the partial of this with respect to x, set it equal to each other to find the exponent n. So the partial with respect to y of the quantity 3x squared y to the 1 minus n is equal to, remember y is the variable, so this becomes the quantity 1 minus n times 3x squared, which is constant in this case, times y to the exponent minus 1, which would be um, minus n, because we have to subtract 1 from the exponent. Doing this again with the partial of x with respect to x of this quantity right here, which is minus x cubed y to the minus n is equal to, notice in this case x is the variable, y is not, so this becomes minus 3x squared times y to the minus n. Alright, so now we realize for this to be exact, this must be equal. Notice that we have a 3x squared y to the minus n, 3x squared y to the minus n, but here we have a y, 1 minus n, and here we have a negative 1. So we can say that negative 1 must equal 1 minus n. Moving the n to the left side, we get n is equal to 1 plus 1, or n is equal to 2. So therefore, the integrating factor in this case must be 1 over y to the second power. So if we now use that, use that integrating factor on our equation right here, we can now say that, of course, we might as well grab this one right here, and we'll make it easy. We'll just not take any shortcuts. 1 over y to the second power multiplied times 3x squared y dx minus x cubed dy is equal to 0. All right, so when we multiply, we get the following. So we get 3x squared over y times dx minus x cubed over y squared dy is equal to 0. Again, we can assume that this is going to be exact, so now we simply have to find the solution. To find the solution, we can say that the partial of u with respect to x is equal to m, 
m of course is going to be this quantity right here. So we can say that the partial of u with respect to x is equal to 3x squared over y. That means that the partial of u is equal to 3x squared over y times the partial of x. And that means that u is equal to the integral of 3x squared over y times the partial of x plus a function of y, because in this case, of course, y will be a constant, which means the integration, the constant of integration can be a function of y. y is a constant, so we can just leave it there. Here we're simply going to get u is equal to 3x to the third power divided by the new exponent times y plus a function of y. The threes cancel out, so we have u is equal to x cubed over y plus a function of y. We'll do the same for the other part of the equation. So the partial of u with respect to y should be equal to n, which means the partial of u with respect to y should be equal to minus x cubed over y squared. I think I'm bringing the y squared to the numerator, make it y to the negative 2. So the partial of u is equal to minus x cubed y to the minus 2 times the partial of y. And so therefore, u is going to be the integral of minus x cubed y to the minus 2 times the partial of y plus some function of x, because in this case, x will be the constant, so the, the constant of integration can be a function of x. And so we can then say that u is equal to, that would be minus x cubed y to the minus 1 divided by minus 1, which is the new exponent, plus some function of x, which means that all the negatives cancel out, so I have an x cubed over y plus some function of x. Notice that this looks an awful lot like that. We have an x cubed over y, x cubed over y, function of y, function of x, that means the function of y equals the function of x, which means it must be a constant. So therefore, finally, since u is a constant, if du is equal to 0, then u must be equal to a constant. So we can say that a constant is equal to x cubed divided by y, and that would then be the solution to our original differential equation. So you can see that you can use integrating factors of all sizes and shapes. We can have it as just as a function of y only, as a function of x only, and sometimes as a function of x and y. So all you need to do is just put a simple what you expect to find and then you find the exponent of the variable that you're looking for. And that's how we find the solution to this differential equation. Now in the next video, we're going to do it again, but in this case, we're going to assume that the, the integrating factor will be in the form of 1 over x to the m power, and see if we get the very same solution, c equals x cubed over y for that same differential equation. So stay tuned if you want to see how it works with the other integrating factor.